Hey there. Um, since a few days now, since Ignition 8.3, the beta has released, I thought it's a great idea to have a quick, short unboxing video. So uh, this is it. Um, I want to uh, walk over a few features, uh, show some first impressions and things like that. Um, well, let me first start by sharing my screen. Um, I already downloaded Ignition. I already installed it. Um, I enabled the quick start program, which gives me some project and some tags and such. So that's already there. Um, all right, so let me share my screen. So as we can see right here, um, it's the new Ignition Gateway web page. Um, guys who previous worked with Ignition might recognize uh, some part of it, but we don't have the classic home status like configure sections anymore. Now we have five or six new sections. Um, and the home section still exists. We can open up a designer, a perspective session, or a vision client, and things like that. And then we have the platform settings, like all the system gateway settings, all the modules that we installed, uh, but also make backups and restore. However, it got a new look and feel. The functions are still the same, which is great because I recognize them and I can easily use them, especially if you have used Ignition before. That's really, really valuable. They have bundled also the connections to other devices like PLCs, like databases, OPC servers, and, and such. Um, so we can uh, we can see those here as well. And all this also looks the same. So for instance, if I go for a connection, and if I create a connection, I can still see the same drivers that I'm used to, um, and the entire connection uh, um, process still works the same. So we'll have to fill in the same data and, and things like that, of course. <clears throat> However, it has a new UI UX design. So I think that uh, Inductive Automation did a really cool job of redesigning this entire gateway. Um, all the rest also is familiar to us, like the log files and things like that. So um, yeah, people who have used Ignition can really easily get going. It's a new gateway section. Um, well, of course, uh, also changes were made to the designer and other modules and things like that. I want to go over there uh, in just a bit. But before we deep dive into designer, I want to have a quick glance at the user manual. Um, whenever you go to docs.inductiveautomation.com, they now have a section 8.3 that provides us already uh, with a lot of data about the new Ignition 8.3 beta release. In there, we have already manuals, um, documentation about the new features and stuff. Um, as mentioned up here, they're still editing all the documentation and adding documentation there. But I think they really did a great, great job in, uh, uh, with the data that's already there. Um, what was also uploaded is the Ignition 8.1 to 8.3 upgrade guide. Of course, we had this guide also whenever we went from 7.9 to, um, to 8 or from uh, 8.0 to 8 to 8.1. So we are familiar with upgrade guides. And those always have very Im important information in there because we might need to think of deprecated functions that we need to replace before we upgrade to the new version. Um, this upgrade guide gives you um, insight in all, to, in, in all the considerations that you have to take in mind. Uh, maybe functions like functions that are deprecated and things like that. Um, I've walked through this entire upgrade guide um, and I think Indicta did a really good job with mentioning at least what is deprecated and what it needs to be replaced in. Um, but it's also quite doable, I guess. Um, if I take a look at our standard customer with a standard uh, setup, um, yeah, it's quite doable. It, it isn't made too hard. So that's a, that's a good thing. And of course, whenever there's something that needs special attention, it is included in this upgrade guide. So that's a really a good, uh, good job. I also had a look at the forum. Um, the forum from Inductive Automation also has a section specifically for Ignition 8.3, the release. Um, the section is called Early Release. Um, that's because Ignition 8.3 was already the beta, the beta or the alpha was already released internally a year ago. So um, this that's how it looks whenever we take a look at the form. Um, so Ignition, Ignition 8.3 already has been tested for over a year now. Um, which we can see eventually in the in the product itself. It's it's more stable than the beta release that we had in 2019 uh, with Ignition 8.0. So that's a 
definitely a big step forward. So I'm really, uh, really glad with that. Well, we, we quickly went through the gateway. I went through some pages, uh, forums, documentation. Uh, one thing I need to mention about the forum is that we can see bug reports coming in here. We can see other reactions like people who are requesting new features or um, are, are playing around with some stuff. Um, and of course, I see a lot of a lot of things in here. I can see bugs in here. Um, I have to admit. However, um, it all all seems and sounds very promising. Uh, whenever there's a bug mentioned, there are some uh, people from uh, Interactive Automation who deep dive directly on it and are working on it. So um, feels like a stable um, um, like a stable beta. Well, let's go to the to the designer. Um, as mentioned, I installed Ignition already. I already opened up my designer. Uh, I enabled the quick start project, so I already have a lot of screens and, and, and perspective pages in my uh, designer. Um, there are just a few features that I would like to mention. But first, the designer still looks like our old uh, designer, which is great. So we are, we are known how to use it. Um, one thing that changed at least was where we have our session and gateway event scripts. They are now under the perspective page, um, and we can easily manage the, the session events uh, from in here instead of on a small pop-up. So that's a big change, which, or that's a small change actually that, that can help us uh, during the design phase. Um, one of the new components that was released with Ignition 8.3 beta is the forums component. So I would like to quickly show the forums components. X container. The right. Forms type. Just drag it in. And it already has some default um, data in there. But the form component helps us to create forms. Forms that need to be dynamic. Um, previously, we, we had to style and we had to align every single part of a form, like the header, the subtext, another header, uh, some entry field, and so on. This form component helps us and gives us the tools to create easier to create forms. What we can do in here uh, is make a form consisting out of multiple columns. This is now just one column. And as I can see in the data in here, this one column uh, here items. So this is the one column. This row is the one column. And this column has a few rows. Case, S, items, rows. So it has two rows, which we can see by the here um, and in here I have one that is the that hosts the widget the header which is this text uh, and change the text in here uh, and the other one is the input field here the input the text field um, I can add an additional widget if I like and this widget idea like two and I can set that this widget should be a URL, for instance, URL entry. And the cool thing that we see here and that we didn't saw in 2019 when Ignition 8.0 was released is that everything is already filled. So this is already filled with this drop-down list of options. Uh, previously, we, when Perspective was just released, we had to go to documentation and see that we were able to type in URL. Um, so in here, the, this, this drop-down really helps us. Uh, by design. And uh, whenever I type URL, I can already see this data set coming up here with autocomplete placeholders and all of that. So I can type. So all of that is really simple um, to do. It. And whenever I close this up, got to mention was that I was now just showing the URL option. But of course, we also have radio buttons that we can use, uh, the slider, toggle functions. Well, we have many widgets that we can include in here, uh, which, which help us by designing. Whenever um, I start using this form, whenever I type some value in here, text, test, slider here, I did something wrong in my configuration, but I can see the data data in here coming in. 
So I can already see that the number that I selected here is coming in as a data property here. Then on the component, we have some scripting functions. Uh, we have some events like on submit, and there we can access all the data. That's a really cool, uh, cool. The fun thing is also that you can add um, um, validation of data. So a URL must consist um, a dot, dot com or dot nl or things like that. That's that's cool to have. Um, another thing that I wanted to quickly show is the the new S7 driver. So we have device connections in our gateway. Thank you. Device connection. And in here, we now have the Siemens driver, which connects to Siemens PLCs. And previously, as you might have noticed, we had these four legacy. They're still in here, so you can still use them. Um, but we now have the driver Siemens. And we can give it a name, uh, test. I do have a PLC up here. Address, select 1200, I guess. I'm looking for symbolic addresses, so that's the new thing here. So um, this PLC isn't set that it's that it has absolute addressing, symbolic. Um, it's not really secure there. So my device is created. Well, it's up there. It is already connected, as I can see. And from my designer, I'm able to browse that device. So whenever I start browse devices, I can open up my ignition OPC UA server devices. My test device and for a Siemens PLC, this PLC folder here is new. Whenever I open up the PLC folder, I can see all the logs that are in here. In this case, it's uh, our gate uh, from the office that I can open and close, and I can see some tags that are, are in here. Uh, all of this I can just import in text section. We are um, the tags coming in here. Whenever I open up a tag with the tag editor, I can now see that I'm accessing a Siemens PLC. The naming that's being used here is the exact naming as within Siemens. So that's a really step forward of connecting ignition to Siemens PLC. Really, really happy. Um, another thing that I wanted to show you on the Gateway is that we have modes. We do have, um, have I forgot what they are yeah, here. But for modes, I can configure modes. So I can create a mode, let's call it production. Another mode, test. Now we created the, those two modes. And let's say I go back to my PLC connection and I can say, well, this, this PLC, the Siemens PLC, I do have two of them, um, and I want to create an override. Whenever I'm in test mode, right? Overwritten test. Whenever I'm in test uh, environment, this PLC, this address should be thirty. So based on the mode of the entire gateway, it will connect to one or another PLC, so a test PLC or the real production PLC. Um, so that's really cool. Um, you can define as many modes as you want. Um, one thing so in here is that we do have a new historian. Um, those are at services, historians. As you can see, it's quite easy to find, quite logical. I can create a new historian here. For instance, the new internal Quest DB, which is automatically installed whenever you install Ignition. So that's really new and that's a really powerful history. The time series data set. Uh, I can give it a name. Orion. Again, settings here. Create Orion. And this. And historian engine of Ignition is entirely refactored. So it's completely new. However, if you take a look at the screen that I'm showing here, there isn't that change in the look and feel and the things you need to set up. The same applies to whenever I go for some tags, like some random features that I have in here. Whenever I take that tag, um, I want to historize it. True. Select my internal historian with request DB. All of this remains the same. 
And from now on, this tag is historized. Throw, for instance, the power chart on the screen. With simple components. Work. My internal story, and here is my sample text, my random. And there's my data coming in. So you can see the data coming in, changing. So, well, we are familiar with current with the old historian, and the same new, new historian works exactly the same. However, it's more optimized, and I have to believe inductive automation is way more powerful. And the difference is that with the old historian, whenever you were looking for, for instance, a maximum minimum average of a tag over a certain time period, Ignition would pull the database with all the data, and then Ignition would calculate the minimum and the maximum and so on. And with the new power historian, Ignition will transfer the question to the time series database, which is way more optimized for doing calculations. Um, so it's it's not moving that much data anymore. So that's the power historian, which is also included in the new. Um, I have to mention that I'm really curious about things that are coming up um, and bugs that are potentially found in the in the upcoming weeks. We will keep an eye open and we will uh, keep on working on Ignition 8.3 and uh, have a look on what's what's coming up. I haven't really stress tested the software um, yet. However, this far it looks really good and promising, and I'm uh, really future. Um, if you have any questions regarding 8.3, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we are always available for that. Um, and for now, uh, I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, speak to you next time. <laughs>